Hey, and well met friends! Zandang here for another episode of the Epic Story. When we last left off, we were getting ready to talk to Korn here. And, well, now we are going to do just what that. What have meant by that? I'm completely at a loss, Stapdang. How can Na have known what Elrond said to his sons before we departed Rivendell? And what does it mean that he does not... that he does know it? Kornir sighs, and you realize that it has become a familiar sound. He catches your look and smiles bitterly. It feels like we are mirrored in something we do not fully understand. We cannot afford to ignore this mystery, for it may threaten the very present, the very purpose of our journey. But what will we discover? We must take a rest in any event. We can talk this over later and hope things will be more clear. All right, well, let's talk it over later after I put on these trousers. Okay. There we go. Level 64 stuff. That is perfect for level 72. But, you know, when we're doing this kind of quest stuff, way over level it doesn't really matter. 290 marks, that's not too bad. And ally upgrades, yay! Okay. Here we go with book three. I do not like this. I do not like this, Staff Deng. How has Na come to know our potential of our potential road? That Elrond advised his sons to remember the paths of the dead. For we may have need to walk them. Was known but to few, and all of them trustworthy. Something is not right about this. It will not be long before we must set out again, but in the time before we do, we must learn what we can about Nar's recent activities. There may be some clues in them to reveal the source of his knowledge concerning our errand. Speak to Frethringir about Nar. He proved helpful in returning his friend to clarity, short-lived though it was, and may help us again. Alright, if I remember right, this is a shorter book, and it was kind of the uh, layover book that came out right before Rise of Isengard, or maybe it was the same day, I don't remember. But, uh, anyway, let us talk to this dwarf. I'm sorry he upset you. Nar means no harm. Yes, I am sorry he upset you. Nar means no harm. Frothingale listens as you recount Kornir's request to know of Nar's recent activities. His brow creases in thought, and he is silent for a moment. When he speaks again, his words come slowly, as if he is unsure they will be of help. A few days before Wadub, the Dunlending, came to Zergrond, I noticed Nar spending a great deal of time looking through some of the bookshelves for something. I thought it odd, because he generally takes little interest in the books and records here. But he did not speak of it, and I did not ask what drove his examination. I can tell you which section of the shelves it was, but there are a lot of books to go through. I do not know if that will be of any assistance, uh, but you are welcome to seek a common thread if it may help you or your friends. Look at the shelves in the south to the southeast of here, around the illuminated statue. Dwarves always talking about your statues. All right. Oh, yeah, that is a pretty cool statue. You found some torn pages, which seem to have undergone a great deal of use over the years. The words are very large, and every page has an illustration drawn in fanciful style. Kari was a young dwarf, smaller than you or me, and wherever Kari went, he took his axe or three. One axe for his left hand, one axe for his right, one axe to carve the roast, 
he ate most every night. Now on now one day the orcs did call. They came right up to the gate. Come in, come on out. They said, "We'll have a feast. Don't be late." The dwarves knew what that meant. They knew it very well. If they were to see the orcs, they'd not hear the dinner bell. Do you know what Carrie said? He said it loud and clear. I will go to see the orcs and give them things to fear. But you're so little," said the dwarves. They took him not to go. Told him not to go. But Carrie went. He would not stop till he faced the orcs below. The orcs laughed. What can you do? Just hold still. We'll get the skewers. They turned their backs, and that was that. So we called him, Carrie or Cure. All right. You found a parchment, yellow and old, tucked away between the covers of a thin book, apparently forgotten. Hail, Thay Rain, King under the mountain! Preparations for leaving the Coom are well under way, and it will not be long before our people are ready to depart for the Blue Mountains. The great wheels in the depths will turn without them. I wonder. For how long? I am writing this letter to express my concern about Nar. You know as well as any one the things he has seen, and the service to your father cannot be questioned. He deserved much better than he has gotten. He seems not even. He seems not even to see me these days, though I must endure the retelling of my own exploits too. For or a dozen years in the past, it makes me sad to think of it now, and his excitement in each recounting of the previous one, forgotten, saddens me all the more. This is why I must ask your permission to remain. When the others go, Nar will not go to the Blue Mountains, and I wish to stay here to look out for him. My son too wishes to stay. He is young, and knows nothing of our real home. This, to him, is no exile, but the Blue Mountains will be. I do not want to deprive Fithregir of the only home he has known. I will do whatever you command, of course, but this is my desire, if it be your wish to grant it. Hervan, the Rake Slayer. All right. A slim book, Herbs and Plant Life of the Coom, is resting atop several others, as it has been recently removed and carelessly returned to the shelf. It is my hope that these musings on great variety of plant life found within the Coom. Will be to help to those who, by want or need, find themselves uncertain of an herb's ability or a vegetable's properties. It is clear that such knowledge is fading in my people. Thor has commanded the opening of a new wing in the mines beneath Zig Zagrond, but my own studies have been, of necessity, self-directed. I do not complain. Would this type of a voice complain about research? The gems they have la- taken from the old wing stir my heart as much as they do any of my fellows. But there is much to be learned from the green, as there is from the stone, and that is why I started speaking like this to stand out. But I ramble, as I often do when I called upon to defend my interest. This is followed by several pages of notes on various plants that grow on the slopes of Thor's Coom. One of the pages has been turned sideways and earmarked, and catches your eye. The next herb is easily found throughout the Coom. Simply follow your nose, and on the day and on a day of calm weather, 
its sweet smell will guide you most easily to patches of hathwornol haras growing on the grassy slopes the name in fact means sweet wanderer wander and the dunlendings whom i have spoken believe the smell to drive away evil beings when the herb is crushed and added to water containing the petals of najem maju and the fruit of the quillum dozen steeping the solution for an hour produces a strange smelling brew that i have noted for its ability to prove provide clarity of thought and heighten in reasoning and also this accent it does seem that it, its effects dulls with res- repeated use and the brew should therefore not be overused all right well that was a good waste of 10 minutes let's talk to nar you have brought the gemstones good good these will do very nicely nar nods in your direction and wide smiled creases his old face you have brought the gemstones good good these will do very nicely he seems not to recognize that you have brought no gemstones this is going about as about as well as you expected all right let's talk to the ranger once more that's an accident all right nas words remain as cloudy as ever it was worth trying nas words remain as cloudy as ever it was worth trying staftang though it has not borne fruit you should go to canada at the campsite of the gray company in a grove of trees east of the akluth village of larkonk and tell him that we are not closer to learning why na spoke of the paths of the dead canadaith is a master of lore and may have thought of something of course i realize it was probably a stupid idea to tell everyone here in this hall where the ranger's place is after they had no secret information that we have uh, not wanted them to know but you know thus is a day in the life of a ranger dumb as ever anyway thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the epic story when we return we will be going down the mountain once more and talking with the rangers to learn of what should be done with our newfound knowledge but till then thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again real soon for another episode of the epic story thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit the like button below and if you'd like to see more of my daily content feel free to subscribe and you'll be notified when that new content comes out and also if you'd like to help support my channel and help me continue to create high quality videos feel free to support me on patreon and you can get all sorts of great rewards in the process. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again real soon for another video.